Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Medium Radio Show here on Para-X Radio. I am your host, Reverend Ivy Rivera, Psychic Medium, coming to you from the Ivy League Psychic Academy at 4511 Main Street in Amherst, New York, which is right outside the Buffalo area where we are raising up the next generation of light workers. I am here with my beautiful co-host, Teresa Matuzak. How are you, Tree? I'm good. How are we doing today? Good, doing good. We have some interesting uh, topic. Uh, some interesting topic. That's some. it's going to be a yeah. It's you're going to have to figure out. You're going to have to decipher what I'm we saying. We may be here some. I have my own language. <laughs> so uh, it's a word now. So what what we're talking about tonight is a uh, paranormal activity in connection with depression, anxiety, drug and alcohol abuse, physical illnesses, and how exactly these things are connected. We uh, have a paranormal project group running here uh, at the Ivy League Psychic Academy, and it's quite a large group, actually. We were Mm -hmm. a little surprised at the turnout on that. Um, I was looking for help to assist me in dealing with my client base that is suffering from paranormal activity or attachment issues. And when you have too many calls coming in and the work itself is very draining, you know, you start to look for helping hands. And I realized there wasn't a ton of helping hands. I had a lot of people willing to come and assist that were ghost hunters and things like that. And they Mm -hmm. understood equipment, Mm -hmm. but they weren't psychic mediums. They weren't necessarily counselors who understood this other aspect of it. And Uh, I really wanted to come at this from a more holistic perspective that isn't about paranormal investigation and ghost hunting. So what I did was I I put this group of people together and they've been uh, really successful so far. Mm -hmm. We're in the, what, third week of training, I think? Going into the fourth, yeah. And what we've been... been very interesting been very interesting. Yeah. Everyone in this group has is bringing something to the table. We have people from several different uh, successful paranormal investigation teams mm-hmm. who can help with, if we need it, not that that's what we're doing, but if we needed to understand the equipment and stuff like that. We have them coming in. They've also learned quite a bit on protection. Mm-hmm. We have other people in the group who've just been going on ghost hunts, yeah. which is a lot of my client base with problems, you know, which we're going to get into in a minute. So we have some people who don't know much of anything about protection. They're just fascinated with ghost hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have people who are nurses, counselors, teachers. We have psychic mediums in the group. And uh, what we decided to do was to train everybody in psychic mediumship and helping spirits to cross over to the other side when they need that. We're learning how to properly counsel the families and uh, how to also break down what exactly is paranormal activity and what is more like mental health issues, uh, you know, emotional issues, intuitive ability gone awry, people not managing the energy properly. So that's, that's what we broke down last week. And the reason we decided to do this topic on this show is because Mm -hmm. I made a post about the Ivy League Psychics Paranormal Project. I made a post and I said, uh, depression, anxiety, paranormal activity, attachments, illness, anyone experiencing these issues, you know, feel free to contact us and we'll be getting you the help that you need free of charge. And we were bombarded with over 50 messages immediately. I still you know, haven't gotten back to everybody. I yeah. I was like shocked because I push this all the time. This is my business. It's hard to get that many people willing to come and open up and ask for help. So it was kind of a I'm sorry. It was it was really kind of amazing though. I mean, I think the group handled it beautifully, you know, honestly, but it's like it was, it kind of felt a little overwhelming. Like the energy you start, like even I started choking. <laughs> like I was just like, Oh my God. And like my throat won't stop tickling. And it felt like it was that pressure, you know, like if something like Every, touching everyone throat. in the room yeah, who needed the help, they weren't talking about it. So right. we all had these closed throat chakras and we were all hacking. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, absolutely overwhelming, but it's going to go on for a long period of time. I mean, we can't get through everybody, but we, you know, not in one week. Um, but we do encourage you guys to contact us on Facebook. I'm, I'm on, uh, Ivy Rivera on Facebook. You, you can send, uh, if you're having any of these difficulties that we're going to talk about today, you can send me a message and say, you know, could you and uh, the Paranormal Project team 
uh, help with this. And we had everything from kids who were who were you know, crying chronically and dealing with emotional issues and feeling like they had spirits in their room to adults who were dealing with drug and alcohol abuse to depression to people coming out of prison looking for help uh, because, you know, they feel like they have attachments. I mean, we were dealing with everything. It gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. So, you know, in a nutshell, um, we're encouraging you guys to send in your questions on this topic tonight as we get into it and um, we're going to um, also be taking your regular Uh, questions. Do you want to direct them on where to send and what kind of questions we take here on the show? Uh, We take questions basically dealing with anything psychic, you know, mediumship, paranormal, uh, lost objects, you know, love questions, you know, relationship, past loved ones have, you know, that passed on and so forth. And you can send them in on the ParaX website, which is para-x.com, right there in the uh, stream or the chat. Um, you can also go to, on Facebook, Ask a Medium Para-X. That is our event page, and you could post it right in there. There's a little thing that's popped up, a little image that says, you know, if you have a question for us, post it here. You can also leave those questions on the uh, Ask a Medium business page on Facebook as well. Right, and if you guys, okay, uh, have, including, you know, lost objects, questions for us, spiritual development, whatever, psychic mediumship, like Trace said, you can also text them in to me now at 716-602-1391, and I'm going to give that one more time, 716-602-1391, and I know we already have some coming in, and uh, we'll be getting to those questions uh, from, yeah, uh, what, Facebook, you stream, uh, para X, mm. Facebook, and then text. Right. Um, okay. So I also want to talk a little bit about some upcoming events that we have here. Um, the Ivy League psychics, mediums, psychics that I have trained by hand at the academy here will be doing a psychic fair. We are supporting scleroderma awareness. So we're doing a basket raffle, we're doing gallery shows, everything. (laughs) And so much of it is holistic and organic and massage therapy and Reiki, Reiki, but also readings, a ton of fun, entertainment, tons of vendors, art, uh, local Mm -hmm. artists will be there, jewelry makers. I know you're selling your crystal and jewelry. jewelry. Yep, yep. And um, I'll be taking part in the first gallery at 3 p.m., um, tickets are five dollars, and one hundred percent of those sales goes to the Scleroderma Foundation. And I will be—it's a tag gallery, basically. We just had one here this past Sunday, which was oh my god, too much fun. Yeah. Um, and it will be five of us: uh, me, Mandy Sue, who is also she suffers from Scleroderma. She will be taking part. She's a fellow psychic medium, classmate of mine, love her dearly. Uh, Brittany Rose and your two beautiful daughters, Rainin, who is 17, and Garcia, who is 12. And they are amazing, I have to say. <laughs> so my Garcia, 12 years old, will be making her, her real public debut there at a gallery. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Garcia Rivera, psychic medium. And then Rainin, who's been reading for the public for a couple years, 17, she'll be doing it. I'm actually doing a gallery show at 6 p.m. Tickets are $10 for that, and I'm... I am going to bring the girls up with me, and the three of us will be reading for the public for the first time that night. That's exciting. So, I can't wait. looking I forward to it. It's like, I want to be busy, because I'm also going to be doing private readings off to the side with the other mediums, but then I'm like, I want to watch. Like, I- We'll film. <laughs> right. We'll, oh, oh it'll God. be on YouTube. So so we're going to, uh, we also have, okay, a uh, tarot uh, reader yes. who also trained here at the Academy under Reverend Amy Liz, and we have astrology. We have all kinds of things. Henna. It's going to be fantastic. So so drop in. That's April 16th. It is yeah. the Ivy League Psychic Fair supporting scleroderma awareness. You can find that on Facebook. There's an event page running for that as well. Okay. Um, well, I know we have a lot of questions coming in here, and I kind of want to get on to, you know, our topic a little bit, start helping people out with all of this. Um, the, the big difference between, you know, ghost hunting and what we're doing with our Ivy League Psychic Paranormal Project is this. We are a group of people available to come and assist you in um, all kinds of different issues that you might be having that you think could be connected to uh, paranormal activity or attachment issues, but also a lot of people are overlooking the fact that there's a precursor and a you know, a follow-up with paranormal activity surrounding drug and alcohol abuse, depression, anxiety, illnesses, things like this, emotional disturbances. And we want people to be more aware 
of the connections. So this group that will come out and help you or you guys can come to us, what we're really dealing with um, is psychic mediumship ability. Everyone's being trained, if they aren't already trained from the academy, in learning how to handle these situations without needing equipment. A lot of my client base suffering from paranormal, they are actually people who went out on ghost hunts and were not prepared. They're attracted to paranormal activity. They thought that this would be fun or they got into dark arts at some point. They were messing around with Ouija boards. They just are basically people who are open and sensitive or have become sensitive uh, to the other side and they didn't necessarily know how to control it. They didn't know the difference between light and dark and they found themselves in a lot of predicaments and sticky situations. So, um, you know, we also have people ranging from, you know, men, women, children, mm -hmm. older age people. I mean, we're... Even animals. Animals are affected by absolutely. it, too. Yeah. So we're coming at it from a really wide perspective, okay? This isn't mm -hmm. just, you know, a ghost hunting experience. So um, if you guys need help, by all means, like I said, okay, reach out to us. Uh, but um, we're looking essentially to help people maintain the wellness that we're able to bring in. We're sending them healing. We're sending them Reiki. We're sending them, you know, removal of blocks, obstacles, toxins in their body that are attracting the negative paranormal activity. And then we're teaching them how to maintain it properly. Right. And if a family is not willing to do that, or an individual, if they're not willing to do that for themselves, there's really no help we can offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to eventually take over it on your own. I mean, you have to take responsibility for your energy. And we're really breaking it down into energy attracts energy, the basics on what we already know. Okay, so people who are like, oh my God, I think there's a demon in my house. I mean, it's really actually rarely ever something like that. But they could be super negative and they could be feeding it all the time and they could be talking about it all the time and fear this and fear that. And, you know, the more you entertain, the worse it's going to get. And we we can, part of the reason I started this group is because I got sick and tired of, you know, trucking out to people's homes in the middle of nowhere and trying to create peace between a fighting couple and the kids and the house and the harmony and the paranormal activity. And I can give them every tool in the world and I can clear it and I can clean it, you know, but if they don't maintain it, if they stay toxic themselves or they don't understand what's really going on or they don't want to, I can't do anything about that long term. So um, this is what our focus is. And it's it's been absolutely amazing. So the end results are, uh, I can't wait. And we're making a documentary. So I can't wait for the documentary to come out to see, um, you know, how, how exactly we're, we're able to help people and uh, what this looks like from the outside. Now, I know we have a lot of questions coming in. Did you want to say anything else before we start getting over to these? Okay. No, I Put think I'm this good. <laughs> Get your I unicorn horn out. Ready? Here we go. Headache's gone, by the way. Perfect. Um, that's how it should be. So I want to get to a couple questions that were coming in actually last week that that were spillover questions that we could not get to. And then I think we're going to be uh, kind of chiming in here with Para-X here with our producers and seeing what's coming in from there. And Facebook, again, if you guys want to text your questions in, 716 Six zero two one three nine one, or you can go onto Facebook and put in the search bar Para X Radio Ask Medium Show, or you guys can log on to Para X and send them in that way. Okay, let me see what's going on here. We have um, this lady wants to know being empathic. I know there's tons of spirit activity going on around me, even since I moved in with my also empathic boyfriend. Mm. There's been extra activity going on. I'm curious if it's spirits from me, from him, from the house. They like to play jokes. They're taking things. God bless you. I've dated other empathic people. It's always interesting. Um, let's see what we're getting with this. Well, I mean, it's all of the above. I mean, it's literally just like a cyclone. I don't feel like we need a lot of psychic intuition to answer this question because it's just kind of, kind of common basic knowledge. Yeah, answers were coming in as you were reading it. Yeah, I mean, it's basically, I do see spirit activity in the house, yeah. absolutely. There's a male who watches over you at night. I feel like you might be on the left side of the bed. Your boyfriend might be on the right. Um, I feel like there's a male who comes in and watches from the left side of the bed, but he's mostly interested in you, okay? So wherever you are, that's what's going on. I feel like I'm, I'm possibly touching. I'm touching objects. 
I feel like I am connected to the house or the land. I also feel like I go over to the neighbor's house over to the left. So there's a lot of that going on. There's activity going on in the kitchen. I feel like cabinets opening and closing. I feel like there's some funny stuff going on around the washing machine in the basement. Um, I feel like some elementals in the house coming up through the basement. Um, you know, I don't know that any of this is super problematic, but what concerns me is that when you're getting tired and you're being disturbed and disrupted, I think you do need to have some foundation rules with the spirits that live there. And if you see kickback to you setting those rules, I think you may need to do a clearing. Mm -hmm. But you say, no touching me, no bothering me at night, no coming into this room, don't touch this, whatever it is. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Ditto. I mean, I was getting the same thing. It's basically, it's coming from everywhere. It's it's your energy is affecting his energy. His en energy is affecting yours. Um, I, I'm picking up on the rela two relationship guides. It's like they have their own separate relationship guides. It's like, I'll watch my side. You watch your side. We'll come together and agree. Mm -hmm. it, the empathic thing becomes very tricky with the relationship, especially when it's both of you who are empathic because... You just feel everything. You get everything so, so much that it really just kind of overwhelms the other one at times. And it's very hard to tell where it's coming from, and especially we think, when it's heavy. Especially when it's heavy. That's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. We think it's very romantic to mesh with another person. We're like, right. oh, isn't spoon. this, isn't this whatever, <laughs> let's smoo spoon into one unicorn horn, you know, and we're <laughs> going to love each other and we're going to become one. This yay. is the epitome of becoming one. Not yeah. yay for me. I run for the hills. I can't stand it. <laughs> I can't, it's hard. It's too much. And if you look up scientific studies and medical research done on empaths, you can just Google this and you can find a whole bunch of, you know, um, some some assistance in understanding that empaths have more relationship troubles than any other group of yes. people. Yes. And when you put two of them together, as dynamic as it can be, you have to be careful you're not over meshing into that other person and that you have boundaries with one another. Yeah. Okay, I would recommend the Empathic Means lecture that we have coming up at the Academy here. Go to Ivy League Psychic Academy dot com. If you have to Skype in, Skype in, come and attend in person if you can. Start learning the tools of that lecture. And uh, if you learn it, he learns it, we can minimize a lot of the over overlapping overflow, into yeah. overflow into each other. Yeah. It can get pretty heavy. And I was going to say, too, is empaths have to really be careful because we're susceptible to people that are, like, nar narcissistic and stuff like that because empaths are natural healers. And we give off this loving, healing vibe, whether we realize it or not. And we will attract a lot of troubled people. I mean, if you think back... How many people throughout your life, even just friends, had pr tr trouble at home, trouble here, trouble there, were constantly getting yelled at, harassed, or, you know, punished and, or beaten in some way and so forth. And you always find yourself around these people. And that's another thing, mm -hmm. like, with relationships, we have to be really careful what is attracting to us. Scientific studies show empaths more than any other group attract narcissists and sociopaths. Yeah. So not saying that your boyfriend is. He no, seems like a lovely no. individual. Yeah, no, he's I'm good. sure he has some very <laughs> sad dating history, as may you. I would cling to each other. I feel great <laughs> about the relationship. Yes. It just needs to be maintained. Boundary yeah. setting is key. So yeah. look up that Empathic Means lecture and good luck to both of you. I'll do some clearing and gritting on the house and set up some boundaries with the spirits in the house first mm -hmm. things first. Um, kind of lovely, actually. It's, you know, it is romantic, you have to admit. There's nothing like two empaths. Um, okay, I have another one coming in here. My husband and I are going through marriage counseling because I am someone who's been suffering from depression and anxiety since I was a teenager. My question is, will it work? Will we get through our or my issues and find peace? I feel as though the first thing I'm supposed to go to with this question is directly over to you. I'm supposed to tell you to maintain your own self and worry about him less. It's almost as though he is his own person and he doesn't feel and experience things as much as you do. So at the core of everything will be you finding wellness and balance within yourself. It feels as though you have some similar issues in response to the world, others, relationships, situations, possibly even work stuff. So you're going to find more as you, you know, delve into who you are and how you can maintain your own energies and intuition and empathic ability. Now, the thing with him is, you know, he's not 
I feel like completely open to receiving. I feel almost like he's sitting there and the information's coming at him, but it's not even going in one ear and out the other. It's like bouncing right off of his head. So he's a little bit of a, yeah, like of a, a wall, wall, of a brick. Mm-hmm. It's like, thump, off we go. And I don't really know what you could do with that yet. Tree, what are you getting on that part? I'll uh, think. Yeah, totally. A hundred percent. Like I'm, I'm, it's like we're reading. I, let's just say this. You're the voice tonight. I feel like, cause it's like my thoughts are hitting yours and we're like, bam, but wherever yeah, it comes from, wherever well, it comes from, yeah. but he, yeah, it's definitely feels like he is really kind of blocked. Like he's a little shut off. It's like, he's aware of, of different things that are going on, but it's, it's like the interest is not there. You know, I mean, not, mm-hmm. not in the relationship. I'm just saying, like, the, with different things going on. It's like his mind is elsewhere. It's almost like it, he's being given all the right tools and all the right words, but he's not open to hearing it. No, he's just, like, going to sit in his recliner with his can of beer and watch whatever. Yeah, like I showed up. Yeah. Whatever the therapist I'm, says, I'm says, this is hogwash, kind of. It's, you know, but he doesn't look that way. True. He no, looks no, like he, I'm getting lip service. My face, my body, my body exp- you know, expressions, expressions. Mm-hmm. say opposite. I think I think I, I I'm not 100 percent sure, obviously, but what I what I'm generally getting is that I think he's even having a hard time processing things because maybe in his mind everything is fine. Oh my god, I was gonna say that it feels you know what I mean. Like he's not yeah, like, like what really is causing that? Like why go right and then right. not receive? He right. really does not believe that things are as bad as they. But I also think, you know, in all fairness, he is kind of putting some of this over on you. And I have to give him a little credit in that area because a lot of it is going to come. The solutions mm-hmm. are going to come through you. So he's yeah. just kind of waiting for you to figure it out. Now, I don't I don't care for that. Um, while there's some truth in it, it also does fall back onto him. Oh, and course, I don't know yeah. that you're going to see what you guys are capable of doing in this relationship for the next year. It feels like let's let this play out, give it a while longer. A work. Yeah, it feels like there's a lot more work that needs to be invested before they really see, like rewards for the totally you know that that's yeah I, totally I the same in a year down the road some of what he's hearing now that's like bouncing off and falling on the ground is gonna somehow like resurrect itself mm-hmm. almost like spirits whispering it in his ear and he's hearing oh and he's like oh maybe <laughs> yeah that does apply to me too yeah yeah, yeah kind of yeah, interesting definitely. It definitely feels like, too, like, going with that, like, something will pop up where he's going to remember a session or remember... Absolutely. ...something that was said yeah. later and just be like... We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. There's potential here, but I could also very well feel that um, because you evolve and you move forward that you may start to attract other people to you and you may start sort of start looking at where else do I want to be. I have evolved. I have taken this seriously. Mm, you know, we could see a little discord there down the road. But, uh, yeah, give it more time. Good luck with that. Many blessings. Now, do we have any questions coming in here from Parax or Facebook? Okay, let's start getting over to those. Okay. Uh, this question is from Parax, from Catwoman. Uh, I have struggled with depression most of my life. I will be going on a paranormal investigation in May. What is a good way of protecting myself and not leaving myself vulnerable to negative attachments, depression, etc.? Oh, my. I would well, not recommend any paranormal investigation. I, I was just going to say I wouldn't even go. <laughs> I am not. I am feeling like heart palpitations, which is my symbol for um, anxiety. It's also yeah. symbolic of spirit activity messing with you or maybe trying to get in. I don't really feel like you need this. This is the equivalent of when someone says to me, Ivy, you need to go for shamanic training. And I think this is ridiculous. I don't need to go Sorry. learn. I, you know, it is what it voices. is. You channel or you don't channel. I don't right. need to go for shamanic training is what I do I heal you know it's like you have everything that you you know that you need you have all of the you know answers within you you're seeking out something that's within look within instead of looking without or outside rather and then putting yourself um Sort of in a in a state of distraction is what I feel coming from it. What are you getting? With that? I think I think the thing is though is like I want to I want to really emphasize on the whole paranormal part of it is like what I'm feeling is that when you're already dealing with these issues and these issues can come from having an attachment and so forth. When you already have these issues yourself, which may not be from an attachment, and you go into an environment where you could have a possible negative entity or negative energy, you are more vulnerable. Than the person next to you. Gotta believe it. More vulnerable. So it's like, I would really, if you feel like this is more of going in as like a thing you like to do, like experience this and whatever, you really have to heavily protect yourself. Heavily protect yourself. And and I would say that with even having these issues, it's going to be very hard 
to really protect yourself to every like tenth degree, right? Because of that. Um, I also want to say that I w- one of the things I'm seeing with you is uh, telepathy and clairaudient ability. And with telepathy, you're able to hear other people's thoughts, but you believe that they are your own unless you're trained in understanding what is what. Clairaudient ability is the ability to hear spirits communicating with you. Spirits, negative and positive, Mm -hmm. are able to put thoughts into our heads. Now, we believe that they are our own thoughts. So they go unchecked. I feel like this is an ability you've had forever, and I feel like spirits have been doing this with you since you were a child. I think that's the root of your depression. Now, we cannot prescribe diagnose, of course, um, but you need to start maintaining how does my clairaudient ability affect me? What is mine? What is others? And if you could start uh, tackling that and tracing it accurately, I think you can eliminate a lot of the stuff that you're uh, feeling. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I want to do a quick break before we um, kind of, you know, get back over um, into these questions here. I want to say that we have another tag gallery reading coming up at the Ivy League Psychic Academy that was such a hit with a great group of mediums who have graduated from the academy. Mm -hmm. Um, So a gallery read is a group reading where people in the audience get messages. And when is the next one you guys are doing here? We are doing here at the academy is going to be May Sunday, May 22nd. Uh, from 3 to 4.30 p.m. And you guys can reserve your seats by texting, mm-hmm. um, you know, the 602 number that I gave earlier. But go to ivyleaguepsychicacademy.com for more information and text to reserve your seats. Are we doing that one free of charge? Yes. Okay, so free, free of charge. Free event. Free, yeah. free event. And get on it quick because it's to, already I, filling. I have to say, though, like, I was really just proud of, our, of all of the girls, you know, and Amanda and Brittany and... Um, Oh my gosh, Adrian! I'm drawing a blank. Rain in, you know. <laughs> Jules, Jules Wagner, Jamie. yeah, a phenomenal. I mean, they did absolutely amazing, and the crowd was really accepting. They were really like just waiting for that information, and we had a really nice group. Like, yeah, a really did. nice group in there, and everybody and did amazing. And their jaws were just on the ground. I, mean, I am you could have heard a pin so drop. That looking was really, forward really good. to more. You know, yeah, doing it's going to be a great time. But if you guys want to catch up at the very next one, it's April 16th at the Psychic Fair. Now, we do have Level 1 Psychic Mediumship Development class beginning this Thursday. That runs 15 weeks, and it is from 7 to 9 p.m. If you guys have not registered yet, you need to do that on the website. You uh, can drop in if you need to at this point because we only have, like, what, two days left. Um, if you want to Skype in, you're free to do that from around the world, okay? So Level 1 Psychic Mediumship Development class. We also have coming up tarot training with Reverend Amy Liss at the end of June, empathic means to help you manage empathic abilities, uh, coffee with your angels, meet your guides, and children's psychic fairs coming up a couple during the summer so you can get your kids involved with the academy as well. Okay, I want to get back onto some questions here. What's up? 30 minutes. Okay, what's the next question we have coming in from Para Ox? Okay. Uh, this one's from XYZ Yellow. Uh, do my current boyfriend and I have any past life connections? Mm, let me see. I feel a few. Um, I feel a few, but I feel like he he in the he may be experiencing with him that he's a little testy with you in this life. A little bit of fear of abandonment issues. I feel like a little agitated. I almost feel like I'm not saying that he was your child in a previous life, but I feel him feeling like you owe him something. Almost a sense of um, entitlement. Um, and you putting up with it <laughs> from like multiple levels, yeah, yeah, and like multiple lives, almost like this is normal, like this is how it's always been, and I feel like while that's accurate, I do feel like it's sort of the core of whether or not you guys will be working out in this life. So there are lessons just because we're reborn with someone or we have soulmate connection doesn't mean it's right if we're not learning the lessons. So we need to work on that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's quite charming and there's a lot going on there for sure. I feel like one past life that popped in my head was for some reason, it's like I saw them in like a meadow and almost re- I started almost to laugh because it reminded me of the sound of music, like that whole meadow with the mountain She's thing. in the dress, yes. twirling. But he, he actually had went off to war. And um, there was a lot of, it feels like things really, really changed. And he come back and it's like she had moved on to mm. something else. So it feels like there's a lot of separation anxiety going in there too. So it's, it feels like that may spill over a little bit. Like, just like there's just, it feels like there's some anxiety 
in there. So we may be seeing a combination of almost like, yeah, that like fear of abandonment issue yeah. in conjunction with you owe me something. And it just feels like it's been repeated three times. So let's say, you know, or this is the third time. So I want to say third time's a charm. Yeah. Okay. If you guys can get past this, you can learn your lessons. You can learn how to navigate your way on through it. I feel like, um, I feel like you're the leader in this relationship. I feel like you are the one who has a better sense of what's going on and how to manage the energies and be sensible about things, okay? So call, call them out on it and uh, be patient. But I feel like there's a ton of love there and a lot of potential. Yeah. Good luck. It feels very, it feels pretty equally balanced, too. Yeah. Like, it's got a nice he's, balance to he's it. He's a good helper. Yeah. You don't have to ask him for anything. It's really refreshing. He's mm-hmm. just taking care of business. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like there's marriage potential here for sure. What's going on? Okay, this one's from Schmoopy Kings. Oops. Uh, do you Shoops see my ex and I getting back together? No. <laughs> You're shaking your head no, and I'm, I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> so, yeah, just shaking my Whoa. head. I'm just like, like, you can see me. I'm sorry. Like, that's just a, that's um, just a flat, if I'm feeling no, she's shaking her head already. It's just, it's more of this. It's more that it's a suggestion not to. We're not street psychics, so we're not going to tell you what you want to hear. We're not going to read your mind and blow sunshine. We're telling you divinely guided from, okay... Universal what energy we're receiving and, yeah. of what would be best, yeah. okay, for your highest and best good. Just because it's possible doesn't mean it would be the best way for you to go. Okay, so I'm not saying that there won't be like maybe three more attempts, two in the in the near future, and then one trailing along behind that, almost as like a last attempt to kind of grab, you know pull you in. I feel like you need to detach your energy from it a bit. I think that um, if you could go back and listen to the radio show, I think it was two weeks ago on cord cutting. Um, And I'm not a big, let's cut up everything in the universe, you know, but you may want to be aware of what that means when someone can pull you back in with their energy and how you can maintain yourself better separate from him and move forward so that you're attracting more positive people to you and energy from the universe instead of Reading as though you're taken, even if you're not in a relationship with someone or you're not married to them anymore, if your energy is so polluted with theirs, you do actually read to outsiders as being unavailable. Okay, so we could use a little more work on that. And I just feel like, uh, just no. Okay, keep going. Um, you have, uh, you've grown. Okay, and that's where you need to stay. Um, let me read this one. Sure. Okay, the next one coming in is an. L from is that Illinois? Does that say Illinois? Uh, my is my husband cheating or hiding something from me I should know about? We can't legally accuse someone. It's considered slander. Imagine that, right? So I mean, we can't legally, you know, tell you flat out. I will say this: I am sensing some some trust issues, and I do feel like there's validity in your in your feelings of being separated from whatever it is that he has going on. Um, So whatever it is that he's telling you, it does seem as though there is a private world going on over there. I do feel as though it's... um, It's dark and it's black. So what that means in my symbol base is that he has a lot of free will decisions going on over there. He could clean that area up or he could choose not to clean that area up. I'm sensing psychically that he is probably patterned. And so what we can look at over the next, uh, possibly forever, but definitively the next two to three years It seems that it's uh, Destiny charted that he would probably continue on with keeping that area um, that looks dark to me that would continue to cause you trust issues. Yeah, I'm just just really just kind of feeling like he's, like where you were saying, like he's kind of got his own little world going on. Like he just does his own thing. He likes to have his, his life and do what he feels that he wants to do when he wants to do it, regardless of time frame or when it's convenient or whatever she may be have going on with their family or you know or whatever the case might be and Mm -hmm. um she does it it does feel like there it's it feels very long drawn out though and it feels like there are plenty of spirits around giving hints and indications of what's um, a good moral choice what is not and i feel that being widely overlooked Mm -hmm. like you know you're about to make a decision you're about to say something or do something and you feel like eh, maybe not 
Okay? And then Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, well, going to do it anyways. I have a lot of that going on. So I think that um, this would be a good time for you to just sort of ask yourself how much longer, based on the history and, you know, the pattern between the two of you, you're going to feel comfortable putting up with it because it does feel as though it will stay the same or continue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good luck with that. Yes. Uh, This one's from Para-X from Eva. How much longer will it take for me to finally finish my self-imposed magic project? That is the most normal name we've ever gotten. Magic and that project? is the Even? most different question I've ever heard. You of. said magic project? Self-imposed, self-imposed magic. Self-imposed magic project. Huh. Magic. What was the question? <laughs> uh, how much longer will it take for me to finally finish my self-imposed magic project? All right. Well, on that note, I mean, I'm getting four to five months, possibly. Yeah. Like, yeah. I got three to five, so yeah, I'll go with your four. I mean, maybe even up to seven, like it's falling in free will, so maybe up to seven, that's based on your decisions, but I'd say, yeah, about four, ballpark. I'm kind of feeling like, this is kind of interesting to me, because I kind of feel like there's parts of it that have been done, and then she moves on, and then there's another part of it that she's adding in, so it's not completed, and then this gets finished, and then it feels like she's really kind of bouncy, Mm -hmm. like, um... There's, it just feels like there's a lot. Maybe what I'm getting is there's a lot of components to this. And as she finishes each component, she's moving on to another one. Mm-hmm. And that's probably what I'm feeling as to why this is really taking much longer than mm-hmm. what it probably could. But, but yeah. it feels like it's part of the process. It's the way it's right. supposed to go because right. it feels like, you you know, um, destiny charted things are coming from the outside. That could sort of disrupt you or pull you away from it a little bit, almost like other work. And that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. You're really sort of channeling in a lot of ways, you know. So it's like writers who are doing automatic writing, painters who are channeling artwork. You know, it's it's like... Uh, it feels good, though. Very like, good. Like, yeah. really kind of jumping into it. I was just like, oh, okay, that's different. It feels like mm. a breath of fresh air almost. <laughs> and at, t- at times I'm seeing some other... Um, you know, I almost want to say st- more stressful energy is coming in there, too. So yeah. I kind of want to say protection. Work. I don't know if you're going to talk about protection stones at the end again today, but... Uh, I can mention some right now. Yeah. I mean, if, if, yeah, I would say to just kind of, like, be, be which I'm sure she is, because she feels like she's really kind of tapping yeah. into this, but be aware of your surroundings and exactly the way you're phrasing things, because words have such a, a heavy way on things. You have to be really, really caref- careful how you put it across, but... Um, I have what's called the rule of black, black stone rule of thumb is what I call it. And it's all your black tourmaline, obsidian, Apache tear, jet, um, and onyx, which these stones all help with protection, Mm -hmm. helping to shield from negativity, draw it in and push it back out and make it more, flip it into positive. Each one has their own thing. Um, I gotta get some of these up on the event page. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, but I would say make sure you have, especially the, the tourmaline, make sure you're wearing that while you're doing your project. Just protect yourself because you don't want to leave yourself open to any energies that may be, um attached to it's, whatever it's, you're... It's almost as though, you know, when, like, a musician starts on a song, you don't want to mess with the area until you're done. So you mm-hmm. want to leave everything mm-hmm. in an accumulation of, you know, in, intuitive, like, channeling and the energetic inspiration and all that jazz. But at the end, you really got to clean all that out of there. Yes, yes. And yeah. I believe, um, I was at Citrine helps with creativity as well. Oh, cool. So... Now, okay, I want to get on to um, a couple, uh, you know, text uh, questions over here in just a minute. But I also want to say that, um, you know, our topic tonight, we're talking about depression. We're talking about anxiety, paranormal activity, attachments. How does all of this correlate? We'll go on to that mm-hmm. next. And and really, you know, what I had just uh, told the one caller about clairaudient ability and telepathic ability is one of the major things that we all need to be watching for because we have the ability to hear other people's thoughts. We have the ability to hear spirits' thoughts. Now, I don't care if you're a skeptic. You don't believe mediumship or life after death exists. Guess what? It does. And you're just as susceptible as everybody else to the process. It is what it is. And when you have thoughts going on in your head that are not your own and they're coming from a great place, 
that's lovely. It could be inspiration about what direction you should go in. It could be just love or tenderness coming from a loved one on the other side in a time when you need it. It could be coming from lower negative energies. And the way that they like to work is at night. And it is biblical that before bed, as you're dozing off and in the morning, you need to put extra protection around your thoughts. Guard your mind. So if they're using this, and you start to feel like, maybe I'm depressed, maybe I'm no good, maybe I can't accomplish anything, maybe I'll never have what I really wanted, um, I'm not worthy. That originally was very, a very high likelihood, not your own thought. Now, this is what people do. We are so quick as humans to take over the negativity on our own and make it our career to beat ourselves up. So you don't need to have a full-blown attachment issue or be possessed by a demon in order to cut yourself down. All they have to do is come and suggest it a few times. Now, they've done that two, three times over the course of a week. Within a month or two, you may have a depression or an anxiety disorder so bad that you're talking to a doctor and they're putting you on meds. You know, now you have a full-blown disorder. Now, come on. We have to get back to the roots of what's really going on. We as a society negate that any of this is real. We are ignoring telepathy. We're ignoring clairaudient ability. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If we continue to do this, we will all be mentally ill. What's really crazy is that we're not just embracing this and saying, hey, Maybe it's true. Let me see if I could be mindful of what is mine and what is others and start to manage it. So that's the first step. Because from there, once you are depressed, anxiety ridden, ill, of course, your body will start to, you know, manifest the symptoms um, in physical illnesses and things like this. And then you have anger management issues, you're polluting the family, then they have problems. We could most certainly manifest paranormal activity um, in this way. So it's a little bit of what came first, the chicken or the egg. And um, it sort of can very easily start with paranormal activity on a mild form. Then you take it over with your own energy manipulation and then it becomes a paranormal problem including full-blown attachment issues and hauntings so um you know be mindful of what you where, where you are in the stage of things and gauge it gauge your family as well and how they're being affected because certain family members have it more so than others and ignoring it is not the solution and meds are typically not the solution right. um of course, we cannot prescribe or diagnose. Okay, we have more questions coming in. You want to go over to this? Yes, this one. Um, this one's pretty heavy. Um, this is posted via the uh, Ask a Medium business page. Um, it is Emily posting on behalf of their friend Mallory. Um, basically, they had uh, lost a friend of theirs, and Mallory had what she feels is an out of body experience, and she can't fully explain what she went through, but. He basically took her and showed her basically his last moments, everything that had happened to him. Mm. And um, it's very sad. And I'm very sorry for your loss. But I'm believing what the question is in this is um, what he's trying to show them. She mm. feels like he's trying to show her something, but she's not really completely comprehending exactly what had Okay, I'm going to let you take that one because I'm trying to organize some other questions over here on another feed. Um, so yeah, you go, you go ahead. Um, I think, I think by this, because it feels like there's a lot of, it's very heavy around his passing. Obviously he, he was, he had a lot of people around him and there's a lot of people who are suffering with his passing. And I think with the constant question of what and where and how and who and all that other stuff, it, it becomes very confusing. Um, I, I do feel that he is trying to communicate, but I feel that what I am personally getting is that he is Okay. A lot of this feels, like, very stressful, too. Like, a lot of it is, is like, he just, like, is there's a lot of stress around the situation. So he is okay. He wants you guys to know that he loves you very, very much. He appreciates everybody who's been there. Um, but he wants you all to just kind of move forward and um, try not to dwell so much on what had happened. Okay. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to move on. Having a little trouble kind of navigating all of this. Okay, we're 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 there's no way we're going to be able to get to all these um this week, of course, but um um but we're going to um you know have overflow into next week's. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially, yeah. anything that was not answered, right? What we'll do is hold on to these and try to get back you know to them in the order that they're that they're coming in. 
um, tonight. Okay, so let me see what I'm getting over here. I have one coming through from a 217 Georgette. My husband has been acting differently lately. I was wondering if I'm completely crazy or if there's something I should know. Um, I feel almost like a lot of change and I'm hearing, I don't know, you know, exactly where you guys are in age, but I'm actually hearing, me it's not funny. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm a bad person. I'm hearing almost like midlife crisis. I feel like while it's humorous, it's not. I, I sense that, um, okay, how am I going to say there's almost a place in his in his mind where he's looking for other things. He's searching for other things. He's feeling very anxious. He's feeling like, okay, I have to have, I have to find something different. You know, what if? What's left? Where am I going? Da 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 da. It's almost all at once. And someone whispered, you know, it's more like a midlife crisis. And then what happens with that is that you know we take it in a lighthearted way. So I'm terrible, but. It's more like, oh, it's just a midlife crisis. Okay, but what do we do if we don't manage this? This could be a mess. I mean, it really potentially could. Yeah. Because when, I think that when we're in a crisis, or I haven't gotten there yet, but, you know, I think I've been through enough. I, when you get to a place in life where you're changing, evolving, or it's a period of time where you should be evolving, you can either digress and start manifesting all kinds of messes in your life, or you can learn the lessons, evolve, grow, change. And I feel like he's at a place where he's going to have to figure out what exactly to do with that. I feel like you, however, though, need to look at it as though it is a midlife crisis. And... And almost like research it, study it, Google what other people have done with their maybe husbands, you know, who have dealt with this and handle it accordingly, almost from your perspective as a little bit more lighthearted. Yeah, I would say just kind of relax a little bit because it feels like I'm getting like a choking feeling, like like it's a continuous like mm. coming, like it just like there's just so much being piled on that I literally feel like overwhelmed as if like I can't breathe because it's so thick and but it's it's like stagnant like it's that not he's feeling in. that um, or, or you no, mean her? She, her yeah oh, okay, i'm feeling like, like she's us. feeling that because it, it really just feels like she's just kind of like i feel like she needs space yeah like she doesn't know what to like, like she's just kind of just go up here do, yeah do your thing let him figure his thing out it's not going to be a short process no so you know you have to you have to be ready um to to either go, you know, go at it for the long haul and let him sort this out. It really feels like she just kind of needs to move on to her own thing while he, you know, deals with this. And whether that means, you know, you're sort of separating and dividing energetically or you're separating and dividing literally. It feels like any of that's okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Um, it'll be about three years before we have a clear, concise idea on who he's becoming, you know... It feels like a big switch over. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So many blessings uh, with that. Now, I want to go over here to um, a 986 number. My question is about my past life. Can you tell me anything about one of them? Let me see what we're getting with that. I feel like I'm getting one, you're getting another. So... I guess I'll go. I'll go first, and yeah, I'm gonna toss it over to you. I, I know. <laughs> I know we're getting two totally different things. Um, but there were multiple ones. I I guess this is the thing. The one that I'm bringing up is one that's affecting your life right now, and Tree probably is too. Okay, because that's what we do. We're light workers. We want what is best for you. So usually, when we tap into past lives, it is for not entertainment value, but it's more for a purpose on how you can remove blockages and toxins or learn the proper lessons for this particular life that you're in now. And these things are impeding in a way. Um, now, what I'm sensing is more like cutthroat. I'm feeling like some trouble around the neck or a choking situation around your passing. So I feel like you might be a little sensitive in that area. And I also feel like you may be a little, um, almost like chronically experiencing things going on with the neck, the throat, the lungs and, um, repeat issues also possibly in the glands or the not androids. Oh my God. Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes or adenoids. Uh, adenoids. And <laughs> Glands. Again, it's whatever, making up our own language tonight, <laughs> and I hope you can decipher this. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. 
We've just healed your glands yet again. It's amazing what yeah. we can do from here. So you essentially do in a more, you know, honest okay. way, learn need to learn Reiki, need to learn self healing, yeah. need to learn, you know, how to how to heal yourself until you've sort of learned all the lessons, you know, that you are supposed to take from this. I sense too that around the time of that passing you, it may have created a lot of anxiety leading up to it because you sort of saw it coming. So I feel like you may have a nervous disposition about you a lot of the time. Almost like a little bit of the chihuahua activity where it's like, oh my God, something's coming, something's coming. And I feel like you also need to learn how to, you know, relax through that and understand that everything that's coming in is not necessarily going to lead to disaster. Sometimes even positive things will read energetically as something big and cause the physical body to have an anxiety type of a reaction okay so that's that what'd you what'd you get the one i was getting was um actually immediately started seeing a female gardening and it was like an older female probably in like her like early 50s i want to say um it's like everybody who walked by knew exactly who you were and you're you're doing your work but it also feels like because everybody knows who you are, it feels like you take on a lot of everybody else's problems, everybody else's troubles, and there's not a ton of time. So your only outlet is getting your fingers dirty in that garden. Mm. So it kind of feels like it's okay to be there for people. It's okay to help others, but you really have to take more time for yourself and um, relax but it's also with the gardening I kind of feel like that's more of like a reap what you sow kind of a thing like whatever you're putting in mm. you're going to get out the more you put into something the more you're going to get out sure awesome okay good um do we have any feedback coming from over here I'm going to go on to this one then okay now we have a um question coming in I think this is really the last one we can do and then we need to move on to this mm -hmm. yeah because you're gonna talk about your stones right and yep. so um so we have coming in from a Mandy happy to be listening tonight love you guys mm -hmm. we love you too thank you have a question is it bad or abnormal or dangerous if a spirit from a house you grew up in that had not crossed over has since crossed over with help from someone living in the home and that spirit comes by and visits often is a non in a non negative way, but almost like their family should spirit be stopping by this often. And when is the relationship? What is the relationship to one another? The house no longer exists. He visits basically anywhere I've moved, but it's not negative. I got family right away with it. Like, he feels like a family, almost like I kept hearing, like, pawpaw, like, grandpa, like a pawpaw kind of a thing. And I think that we need to, again, look at past lives mm -hmm. because we have guides that we've been with in previous lives. We have ancient, you know, ancestors and people guiding us and things. We also could be living in a home and you feel like, I have to buy this home. I have to buy this shop. I have to go over here. I have to go in this building. Yeah. You could have been there in a previous life, even connected to the land. Sometimes the spirits that are walking around our houses are not always spirits that were genetically bound to us in this life. Could have been even a previous life. And he just hasn't reincarnated yet, so he's still over there watching out over you. And um, I feel okay about that. Yeah, it just kind of felt like it was one of those things, like, just kind of come back to visit, just to kind yeah. of say hi, see how you are. Like, it doesn't feel like it's anything bad, anything negative. Um just feels like he took a liking. Right. And as long know? as they've crossed, it's not really up to us to judge to be like, well, how often should you really be coming back here? Because they have, They're they earned it. it. They <laughs> earned it, man. No one's going to dictate my schedule once I'm over there. I'm going to nap for a thousand years for all I can. You know, so it's whatever it is. Feels good. Live in harmony. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's kind of sweet, actually. I would just let it roll. Just go with the flow and let it fly. And, and you know, it, there's really no harm that's going to come from this. It's no. just a visiting kind of a, kind yeah, of a thing. Yeah, a little weird, but, you know. Life's weird. What'd you got with so, the, the stones this we, week? Yes, this week, finally, we're going to get back to some. Um, <laughs> I am actually going to talk about uh, amethyst. Um, I absolutely adore amethyst. And I will say this. If you look up amethyst, a lot of people say that it helps with nightmares. It can because it's calming. But please, mm -hmm. do not sleep with your amethyst. <laughs> because it will. amethyst is one of those, what I call the psychic stones. And they help you to develop your abilities, help you to move forward. It's a third eye chakra stone, a communication stone, a crown chakra stone. Um, 
So please, please, please don't sleep with your amethyst. Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way. Please don't give it to your children who love stones because it'll kick up the nightmares even worse mm -hmm. and bring up any anything else. But it is a sixth anniversary gemstone. Uh, typically, they can range from very light, almost like a white color purple, to extremely dark, almost like a black purple. Wow. A lot of people, and they are banded, there's like chevron amethyst and so forth, and people are questioning whether or not it's amethyst because it's so light. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, do they work the same if it's lighter color, or is it better to have it darker if you're trying to kick up psychic abilities? Um, honestly, to me, it's all the same. Oh. Like, it feels like you can have... A tiny little chip of amethyst, and it can pack as much of yeah, a punch it does. Yes, it as does. those big handful chunkers that you can have in your mm -hmm. hand. I do kind of feel like a little bit like with the chevron amethyst, those tend to have a little bit more of an attribute to them, but really it's it's kind of all the same to me. Right. Um, so basically it will increase your spiritual awareness, psychic abilities, inner peace and healing. It can help the mind, body, the soul. It can be a positive transformation stone. You can use it for meditation, balance, relieves, oh my goodness, relieves stress. I use it for headaches. I lay down for 10 minutes, really? pop, it, pop it right at my third eye. My headache's generally gone in about 10 minutes. Amen. I absolutely love amethyst Phenomenal. for that. Um, but it can also be a powerful protective stone as well. So it will help you to keep balance and try to keep a lot of those negativities mm. away from you. But it can also help with um, grief. Okay. It can also help with things like uh, PTSD and dealing with also sobriety and so forth. Awesome. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And well, um, you know, everybody really knows what that one looks like. Well, we might put up a picture of it. I it's will, the yeah. purple. It's the purple. Everyone knows that one the easiest. Now, we do have a Reiki training for levels one and two coming up this Saturday, as well as a master's class. So if you guys want to further your development with Reiki, I do need you to register for that at the Ivy League Psychic Academy .com website um, by Friday morning. So by the end of Thursday, I need you registered. If you're planning on coming in, I cannot Skype you in for that one, however. Um so if you want to book a full reading with me, you can find me at Ivy Rivera Psychic Medium dot com and on Facebook at Ivy Rivera and you can find me on Facebook um Tree or Teresa Tree Matuzak Psychic Medium. All right, and we look forward to hearing from you guys again next week on Para X Radio here for the Ask Medium Radio Show, coming to you from the Ivy League Psychic Academy, where we are raising up the next generation of light workers. Good Thank night. you.